Hey everyone, it's Siobhan here. Today's video is something that I'm really, really excited about. I am reviewing a website called buycostumes.com. The website kind of caters to men, women, and children. There's a huge selection of costumes, and I know this because I spent a lot of time looking through the site. A few weeks ago, a representative for the company contacted me because they saw my YouTube channel and a lot of my hair ideas are so extremely costumey, they thought that I might be a good person for them to reach out to. Right now they're looking for people on social media to showcase their costumes along with creating kind of like a full look which includes obviously hair and makeup. After going back and forth via email for a while and kind of trying to figure out which costume would work and which idea would be okay, um, we settled on one costume. I picked the Cinderella costume um, and it is the Cinderella dress from the live action film that came out earlier this year. So it's really beautiful. I wasn't expecting it to be as nice as it is because um, I tend to be a person who makes my own costumes and I make them for my daughter and sometimes for my husband as well. But this costume came and one of the reasons that I selected it is because not only can I um, be Cinderella in this dress, I can use it for any sort of masquerade parties, I can use it for any kinds of cosplay, I can even wear it next next year for a renaissance season, um, and I hope that you guys are going to like the dress as much as I did. This is the costume and this is the front of it. Um, I really loved how feminine the sleeves were, and of course the butterflies are such a beautiful little detail. Um, but if, if you don't like the butterflies, they seem like they're sewn in in a way that you can kind of snip them out if you wanted to. But the bodice too is really lovely in that it's this sort of blue silver. And the back of it has a pretty decent zipper that goes all the way down to where the skirt begins, I guess. And obviously this is really convenient for anybody who has long hair or is putting together really intricate hairstyles. So you don't have to pull the costume over your head, you can just kind of step into it. So the skirt too is also really incredible. Um, this is a floor length costume and it is a lined skirt. I don't know what this initial piece of material would be called. It is really really stiff and it's kind of covered in these sort of reflective sparkles um, which do, if you mess with them, they do fall off but not so much that it, it's noticeable. Um, so you do have to be careful with the dress when you're like packing it and putting it away because you don't want to um, mess with the detail on the skirt too much. But then underneath it's got this great piece of crinoline and then another skirt here that has this sort of iridescent blue kind of mermaid-esque ruffle. So you're pretty covered. Um, it's not a sheer costume which I really appreciate. I will have all of the buycostume.com um, links and information in the under bar for this video so that you can check it out if you want to. Um, I believe that they are on Instagram and Facebook. They also have a section within their website where you can kind of go and look at other videos by vloggers like me who are reviewing costumes or putting together looks for costumes. So it's also a really good place to kind of get some inspiration or some ideas. Um, I really love this dress and there are so many tutorials on how to do Cinderella hair and makeup so I'm going to kind of stick with that for my hair idea for this costume but I'm going to be a little bit more masquerade with my makeup just because I feel like Halloween is the time when you get to paint makeup onto your face and how many opportunities a year do we get to do that um, so I'm going to be a little bit more crazy with my makeup but um, I hope you like the video nonetheless and yeah I'm just going to get started with it now. To begin, I washed my face clean of any makeup, divided my hair into sections, and used my hot sticks to curl my hair. Here I'm using some styling clips to hold back any of the loops that were lying along the sides of my face. Now bear with me because this might seem a little strange, but before I put any makeup on, I'm using some plain old scotch tape to mark where on my face I'll be painting on my mask. The first piece will lay right above my eyebrows and extend from temple to temple, and the second piece will go along the bridge of my nose. To keep the whole thing even, I've used another two pieces on either side of my nose extending to my hairline. I've chosen Maybelline's Blue Tattoo Eyeshadow to fill in the space. I tend to think that a shinier gel-like makeup works best for this because it reflects light and lasts a bit longer than something that's powder-based. You can see that I covered all the skin within the tape, including my eyebrows and lids. And when I was finished painting in the mask, I carefully removed the tape. I think you can see why I may have chosen to do it this way, because it's a great trick for anyone who may not have the steadiest hand when drawing a straight line. 
Now, with a light iridescent eyeshadow, I contoured my inner eyes before using a darker gray shadow to outline my brows. Next, I used the dark gray eyeliner on both my top and bottom lids, followed by black mascara. I followed this all up with some pink blush and ended the whole look with my favorite red lipstick. It's pretty simple makeup and it only took me about 15 minutes to apply. Moving on to the hair, I began by removing the hot sticks and making a section along either side of my face. The parting began at the top of my head and extended slightly behind each of my ears. Next, I made another parting of hair just at my crown and used a clip to keep it up and out of the way. This is the point at which you might be able to clip in some extensions if you'd like your braids to appear a bit fuller, but I decided to forego this step and just use my own hair. I made sections below the parting at the crown and behind the initial two at my ear. Using a comb, I swept them upwards, divided them in two, and rope twisted them over and across the top of my head. If you're unfamiliar with this technique, I will have my braid dictionary linked in the underbar of this video for you to check out. With the rope twist in place and secured with little elastics, I brought them to the top of my head and tied them in a quick square knot before using a few pins to keep them in place. Beginning on my left, I rolled the hair along the sides of my face backwards. The idea here is to hide the sections you've made for the rope twists. Once I had them in place, I used another small elastic to tie them together at the back of my head. The last step involved taking down the hair at my crown, after which I did a very light backcombing for volume. To mimic the sparkles in the actress's hair, I went into the scrapbooking section of my local art store and found these flat, sticky back gems. I chose various shades of blue and white and then stuck them all over my hair in no particular order. And then BAM! I felt like a genuine princess. I had a lot of fun filming this and I hope you liked it too. The costume is truly beautiful and I'm looking forward to wearing it this year. I hope you enjoyed my video and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!